Hello everybody, this is uh, Dr. Kevin Novak again. I wanted to talk about a plant that it seems like you can't really find it anymore, the banana plant. A long time ago you can walk into any mom and pop aquarium store and they would have these in their aquariums and they were very readily available to the hobbyists and as years went by a lot of the mom and pop stores went by the wayside and now nobody really seems to, at least around me, carry banana plants. They kind of just disappeared. And I can understand why. It's because as a young aquarius, you'd buy these plants thinking, oh, neat. And uh, they wouldn't grow. They just wind up losing their leaves. And then you're left with the rhizomes and they didn't do much of anything and you wind up throwing the plant away and I guess uh, even though the book said they're easy to grow no they, they they're not quite that easy to grow but these I bought at the uh, aquarium like flea market it's a it's a aquatic flea market for the cichlid association and within a week they've all grown as you can see they're starting to grow roots and each and every one of them is growing new leaves within one week brand new leaves are growing on each and every one of them uh, there was some requirements you have to remember about these plants they like dosing because they get their nutrients of course from the water so they like iron and magnesium and stuff like that so if you watch my other videos just make sure you keep dosing when I told you to and they'll do just fine they come in this uh, mottled looking leaf of like a reddish brown and green they also come in complete all green I've seen where the rhizomes were green and some of them were a uh, almost a dark red color uh, there was a guy on YouTube, uh, Jacob's Aquarium, and he got some in, in his nursery. He's got aquatic nursery in California, and he was really fascinated with these plants. I think he never maybe saw these plants before. Like I said, they, they went out of favor for some reason. You don't see them. And he sells them, and he was quite surprised how nice they were. And he really made a big deal over these plants of how nice they were. But they are nice. I've had them. And the only way I can grow them, and I'll let you know, is it seems like you've got to have CO2. Okay, if you don't have CO2, they're, they're not going to do much. And, of course, you have to dose, you know, keep your fertilizers going because they get all the nutrients from the water column. But they do send out root systems, as you can see on some of these the root systems are already beginning to develop and like an anubius they will naturally root themselves into the substrate you don't have to bury them don't bury them because all you'll do is have them rot away if they seem to want to float up if you get some maybe you'll have to put a little weight on them or put a stone by them or something like that to hold them down keep them down until the root system can take hold as you can see, some of the root systems already developing on these. Uh, that's one way of keeping them down. But otherwise, you do not plant them. You do not bury the rind zones. Uh, another thing is the light requirement. They could take moderate light to very bright light. As long as you're feeding them seal 2 uh, the bright light won't seem to bother them. There is another downside to them. Uh, is the nitrates and phosphates. I notice they seem to do better in lower nitrates and phosphates, especially if uh, if you have an algae problem and your nitrates and phosphates are high and you have an algae problem. These are going to get attacked immediately with uh, hair algae on them and they're going to look unsightly. Uh, cyanobacteria may even start attacking them 
and getting around the stems of the leaves and stuff. They sent out aerial leaves like a water lily does. They'll grow very quickly. Once they get established, they, they grow very quickly. And they'll start climbing up to the top of your tank. And they'll even flower for you. They did for me. But uh, one requirement, though, I'm afraid to say, is CO2. I have not been able to grow myself without it. So if you don't have CO2, this is something you may want to stay away from. But if you're looking for a plant that has glossy leaves, it looks like someone put leaf shine on them, like you have for house plants, because the leaves are kind of shiny. They become, they're, they're more of a, I would say, a novelty plant, something that's a, different from all the rest of the plants you're going to have. Uh, and the leaves can get good size. I'm talking about, you know, two, three inch diameter leaves. Uh, they remind me of like your lotus your tiger lotus and stuff like that that you grow in your tanks. They can take uh, cooler water. Uh, I would say 72 all the way up to about 85 degrees they seem to be able to take. Uh, I've grown them in ponds. In fact, if you do put them in a pond, all they do is send up the aerial leaves and they almost look like little miniature water lilies. Okay, you don't even know it's coming from a banana plant. You think it's a miniature water lily. Anyhow, I thought I would make the video in case you find any of these or if you have seen them and thought nothing much about them, uh, buy one. If you're using CO2 and moderate, moderate to high lighting, they can take and try them out. They're really quite a neat plant and why they have fallen out of favor is, like I said, the only thing I can think of is a lot of people would buy them. They're not using CO2. The lighting system wasn't quite right. Uh, they'd wind up just dying or they wind up getting covered with algae. Like I said, that was another big problem. They could cover with algae. And then people would wind up throwing them away. And why would you buy a plant that just is not going to make it anymore, right? So that's the same thing with this. Uh, if you don't seem to have an algae problem, try them out. But I thought I'd make this video because this is a plant that you just can't find anymore. And if you haven't never seen one in person, you'd be kind of shocked how neat they are once these take off. And until next time, this is uh, Dr. Kevin Novak. Goodbye.